Aging Matters on BCTV is supported by the Berks County Area Agency on Aging. Hello and welcome to Aging Matters. This is a show that's provided by and sponsored by the Berks County Area Agency on Aging. My name is Ann Bartlett. I'm the Public Advocacy and Outreach Manager for the agency. Our show today is fitting in this month of February that's typically Heart Month. Our show topic is going to be Heart Healthy Living and Nutrition for Heart Healthy Living. My guest today is Linda Crawshaw, and she is a registered dietitian. Welcome, Linda. Uh, thank you, Ann. I appreciate it. Happy to be here. Um, I think it's very timely that we're going to talk about this. And what we what we talked about ahead of time in preparation for the show is a little bit about, you know, the, we wanted to end up with good, heart healthy nutrition, but I think we needed to understand first a little bit about heart health. And so I'm going to start right with you in terms of turning it over to you with discussing a little bit about heart, um, heart disease, and some factors contributing to some heart issues and concerns. So okay. take it okay. away, Linda. <laughs> okay, Ann, here we go. Very quickly, probably most of the viewers will realize that heart disease is the number one cause of death in the United States, over 600,000 deaths a year attributed to heart disease. So what does that mean, heart disease? Encompasses a lot, but, but basically what we're talking about as it relates to nutrition is, are the coronary artery, artery disease. The arteries that lie on your heart, that's how your heart receives oxygen. Without oxygen, any cell in our body will die. There are risk factors that we cannot modify for these. Number one, gender. Men are at a higher risk than women. A smoking, well, that one is we can, but this gender we cannot. Family history is another risk factor that we cannot control. If you have a history, family history of heart disease, there's a chance you need to be vigilant. And then also your age, over 55, the, the uh, risk increases. Now, we can't control those, so we do what we can with it, but there are some that we can control. Obesity is a, a risk factor that we can control. Also, smoking is a risk factor. Smoking is probably, it's, it's, I say this all the time to people, probably one of the worst things you can do to your body. So many problems happen from smoking, so many problems happen from obesity. So those are factors we can control. If your coronary arteries, when you hear that someone has bypass surgery, that's what they're talking about. They're talking about one of those coronary arteries, I think they're about five, like the Finger Lakes, it would become occluded or with plaque, and then they have to open that up so that your, your heart can regain the, the oxygen that it's not getting by having that coronary artery occluded. So that's basically what we mean. Now that coronary artery, artery disease starts early. We just don't know it. We can't feel it. We can't tell. They really started to find out about this when they were uh, doing autopsies on men that died in the service at ages 18 and 19, and they started to notice that they really had an advanced stages of plaque formation at that young age. So we started to realize that it does start happening before. And one thing, two things that we can do, which we're going to talk about, I think, the rest of the time are exercise and nutrition. Um, and I think that some of the some of the factors then, you know, you talked about the non-controllable factors and then the controllable factors being smoking and obesity and weight. So also some either offshoots of diseases from this as it relates to it, or also with the, the blockages and that plaque buildup there are some, as a result, some things occur because of that, right? So we have um, one of the things I guess I'm thinking of is we, we have diabetes perhaps um, because of some of the combinations of the nutrition that we're not eating, the high blood pressure also with the foods that we are eating causing that flow in our system through the heart problems. Can, can you touch a little bit about some of those things? Sure. Because I think, as you said, we don't feel it until something happens usually, but some of these could be detectable through some of these screenings, right? Like blood pressure screening. Sure, sure. And that's why we should have our blood, blood pressure taken on a regular basis. I work part-time in a pediatric office. They take blood pressures of those children that come in there 
because that's a good screening tool. And every now and then there'll be a there'll be a young person that has a pretty high blood pressure, and that's a red flag for the doctor. So you re we really all need to be having regular checkups, no matter what your age is. And blood pressure is one of those. Blood pressure is another kind of a not a really a nasty thing in the sense that we don't really have symptoms for high blood pressure either until you have a stroke. So regular screening is helpful. There are things dietary and exercise wise that can help lower that blood pressure. The diabetes part is typically, I wouldn't say that's a result of the plaque formation, but definitely obesity contributes to the risk of diabetes. And remember, diabetes is a really insidious disease. Everybody thinks it's a fairly benign, oh, I have diabetes, I just, you know, I take insulin or I take metformin and it's no big deal. But by the time you're diagnosed with diabetes, you've probably had it for seven years and it does damage to every major organ system in your body. So if somebody has diabetes and after about 20 years, you're probably going to notice some problems. And hypertension is one of them. Peripheral artery disease where you have trouble with your circulation is another one. Uh, your kidneys get involved, your, hearts, your heart gets involved. So this is diabetes is, trust me, not a benign situation. And it does really make a difference in your whole body. So it would behoove all of us to try to do what we can to control that risk. Well, and, and and to segue into that, then I guess I think sometimes people wait again till this happens, whether it's, you know, a doctor says you have high blood pressure or they get, they have a mild heart attack, whatever. And I think we start getting medicine for that. You know, we, we take medicine because it's prescribed. So some people think that's the answer. Sure. Whereas today, hopefully, the, the key is, can we prevent those things from happening? And as you said, by looking at adopting that good balance of including exercise of some sort with a healthy nutritional plan, food plan, pattern, whatever you want to call it, a balance of really good healthy eating with some movement. <laughs> I'll put it that way. So, so that can help to prevent these things. So I'm going to take it back to you if you want to start a little bit about maybe the exercise first. Can we start with that? Sure, absolutely. And remember, our bodies were meant to move. We were not, as human beings, designed to just sit around and not do anything. That is, That was not the plan. But one of the really big things that caused us to move less is technology. If you think about it, Think about all the things that, that are developed that make you not have to move. I remember when we didn't have remote controls for the TV and we had to, have to turn, <laughs> yes. turn the TV channel. Now that's a very slight movement, but now we've got snow blowers, leaf blowers, electric garage door openers, you know, all kinds of things that 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 really have limit our ability yes. to move. We have cars and, and people drive their cars to the parking lot and they, they complain if they can't find a space right next to the door. God forbid we park far away on the park end, other end of the parking lot and walk down. So there are lots of reasons why we don't move, but really our bodies were intended and they like to move. So if you're not moving, it doesn't mean your life is over that you can't start. It doesn't matter what age you are either. You're never too old to start moving. That is a myth. If you feel that way, it is absolutely not true. One thing I, I would encourage you to do is to check with your MD before you start any kind of exercise program. Have a physical, tell them you'd like to start exercising. And I would start very slow. Even a five or 10 minute walk a day is great, but we all need to start moving. Ideally, ideally, now I, I'm going to just do a little, real, uh, tell you why I'm so vigilant about my own health and exercise. My father, who I think I take after, I think the lines in my head are just like the lines on his head, but <laughs> And he's dead, but he 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 died at age 72. He was a smoker, heavy smoker. He did not eat well. He was overweight, never exercised. He was kind of a quiet guy, didn't let anything out. And I told him once he was a walking heart attack, he got mad at me, but he ended up having three heart attacks, open heart surgery, carotid scrape, and eventually died. So I have decided I don't want to go down that same path which is why I've been vigilant. So what are we talking about when we say exercise? Like I said, you, you can start slow. Do you have a dog? Your dog will love to walk with you. I think that's one of the best ways to get walking. You can bond with your dog. You get to see the neighborhood. You can go out and about five to 10 minutes a day to start. But eventually what you want to do for a goal is you want to try to build up to at least 30 minutes of something. Either it's walking, swimming, 
riding a bike, either a regular bike or, a, or an exercise bike. You can do a treadmill, you can do an elliptical, and you might be thinking, well, I don't have any of that in my house. Well, I, you know, I don't either, except I did buy a recumbent bike during the pandemic. But, you know, there's a lot of fitness centers now. And if there's a program called Silver Sneakers, that if you have Medicare, you will automatically get a silver sneakers card and you can go to any fitness center that 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 accepts silver sneakers at no cost to you, which is wonderful. Yeah. And you can go and the, the, the gym that I go and I probably I won't say the name, but anyway, there are so many uh, senior citizens that go there and they are so happy to be there. It's kind of a social thing. You get to know people. Oh, hi, Joe. Hi, Ray. And they talk, but they also work out. There's a guy in his 90s that comes there and walks on the treadmill. Every time I see that guy, I say, Joe, I'm so happy to see you here. So it and doesn't. If, and if he can do it, I can do it, right? <laughs> really? I mean, it, yes, that's what I think. When I see these people, I think, yeah, you're you're great, Linda. You're doing it. So, you know. To, well, Linda, uh, some of those things that you mentioned, the, the walking, whether it's just outside in your neighborhood, even if it's a couple of times around your driveway, treadmilling, swimming, biking, are all what I know as cardiovascular fitness, right? Which So those are means to get that heart pumping and moving, right? That's true. And, and if you do that for 30 minutes, and it doesn't have to be super, super intense, but you should work up a little bit of a sweat. If you do that for 30 minutes, at least five times a week would be your long-term goal to do that. They say that is the recommended amount, 150 minutes a week of that kind of exercise. So that's what I would build up to. And I'll tell you what, you will feel more energetic. You will have a better outlook on life. Your mood improves. And, and like I said, if you do go to a place, you'll, you'll meet people and they have classes for senior citizens. It's, it's really overall very good. But on the other hand, you don't have to go to a fitness center. There are other activities that we could do, uh, such as yard work. Believe it or not, now that obviously we're not doing any now, but mowing your lawn, gardening, weeding, raking leaves, all of that helps us exercise. Uh, you, you could walk with your friends. Maybe you have neighbors in your in your neighborhood that you could go out for a walk. It's always nice to have somebody that you're accountable to because then you can't say, well, I'm not going to go today because well, Anne's and waiting for me. I know she's waiting for me, so I've got to go. And walking and talking kind of makes the walk faster. Absolutely. You know, it goes better. I think some of the folks that I know who live in high rises have told me that they'll go out of their apartment door and walk the hallway, you know, maybe their own hallway a couple of times, or they'll go down hallway and take the steps up or down a flight, walk that hallway, you know, and, and you can kind of slowly increase the, the number Absolutely. of hallways that you do. Um, now that's the aerobic or cardiovascular. What about when we hear about resistance or strength training? How does that come into play? Do I need to do that too, Linda? What you do should, you think? Yes, you, resistance and or strength training, the same thing. You, If you have stronger muscles, you're going to have stronger bones. So to, to, to really be the optimal, healthy exercise wise, you should do that twice a week. And, and you don't have to, uh, uh, you're, you're not, you're not going to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger with these muscles that you have to buy all new shirts. That's not the key. The key is, and you can get some, if you go to a fitness center, you can certainly get somebody to teach you uh, or show you the machines. They have ones that are very easy to use. They're not going to, you're not going to hurt yourself because you're in a machine with the controlled exercise, but we should be doing some kind of resistance or strength training twice a week to make sure that our muscles are strong and that'll make our bones stronger. And really that does help with calorie burning and it, it, it just helps all around. We, we really shouldn't do one without the other, we should do both. And real quick, before we go to now the nutrition segment, you know, it's so hard to, to tell people that just do it um, <laughs> because it sounds easy and some of us just lack that oomph to get going. But if you can focus on once you do it, even the first time you begin embark on, say, a walk in your neighborhood, when you come back, if you can really think, well, later on, gee, you know, I slept better that you know the next that night, or you know some of the other benefits that I, you can see over time. I'm going to be stronger. My legs will be stronger. I I may have a better balance, so I may not fall. Right. Um, like I was because I've improved some of the muscles. I'm maybe less, I hate to say the word depressed, but 
down in the dumps will say, you know, because if you're sitting by yourself, there's nothing. But but now that you've done that, that kind of things are moving. I'm thinking better. I'm thinking clearer. So That's I think true. there's a lot of benefits that we don't realize unless we stop afterward and go, you know, and think about I, I always say that when I walk out of the out of the a gym or a facility, I'm breathing. Just I feel like I'm breathing better, healthier, deeper, and I feel just in general better. So I, I think that we, we 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 kind of till we get that motivation to do, we miss that. So looking at that, we're going to couple that movement with kind of looking at how to balance then to make it worthwhile to eat a little healthier overall, also geared to my heart and movement and ability to keep my weight down and the blood pressure down and things like that. So let's start again then on the nutrition component, Linda. Okay. You know, it's interesting that we have, to, we're doing this show where we could spend literally, we could spend <laughs> two hours on exercise. We could spend yes. hours just talking about nutrition. So please don't think, you know, we're, we're trying to give you the, the, the real crux of the matter here, but um, it's this is a topic close to my heart and I love talking about it. So I know it sounds easy to just go do it, but I'm telling you that you will feel it. You will feel the rewards, better cognition, better sleeping. Uh, it can uh, reduce the risk of dementia, Alzheimer's, all kinds of things exercise can do. It's really if you could put exercise, the benefits in a pill, we'd be billionaires, but we can't. So we have to do it. So anyway, here we go with nutrition. What I would recommend for nutrition for a healthy heart is consume a lot of fruits and vegetables. I would try to say, they say four or five servings a day. I, I personally don't do a lot of fruits. I do a lot of berries because they have uh, fiber in, but I do a ton of vegetables, things like broccoli, cauliflower, green beans, asparagus, tomatoes. Uh, I had cooked carrots today that I got at the farmer's market, but, but uh, the vegetables, you can't go wrong. So if you increase your vegetable intake, and I would, when I, when you think, well, what are there vegetables I shouldn't eat? Well, let's think about uh, canned, fresh, or frozen, which, which is better. And the answer to that is frozen because the canned obviously have sodium in usually. The fresh ones, you don't know when they were picked. And as soon as they're picked okay. from wherever they were growing, they start to degrade. So the frozen are usually picked, flash frozen right away. They would have probably the best nutrients. But if you can, if you can grow your own vegetables and pick them and eat them right away, that's even better. So a lot of vegetables and what we really, a lot of whole grains, like whole grain uh, bread, uh, Oatmeal, ah, oatmeal is another good one. That's whole grain, brown rice. There's something that we call quinoa. It looks like tiny little uh, pebbles, but it's almost nutty. And, and that can be a side. And you can find quinoa in the same aisle as the pastas. It's all in that same area. You can have that as a side dish, many recipes. Uh, the, another thing is legumes like black beans, uh, um, white beans, Lentils. Lentils are something, if you watch the Today Show today, which I caught the end of at the fitness center, they had a recipe on lentil tacos. Can you believe it? Lentil Great. tacos. Easy to make. Tons of things. But if you don't, or if you're nervous to try a lentil, try lentil soup. That you can buy a can of lentil soup at the store. Try it. You, you, and those are all alternative protein sources, okay. too. They have now, protein. Well, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. When you start about whole grains and whole and, and talked about bread, Again, remind us if I'm going to the store and I'm going to look for that, if I'm, that's one thing I'm going to change. What should I look for to make sure that I'm not fooled by the packaging? What well, can I look for? You can look on the ingredients. If it says, uh, sometimes they say this bread has a nine grain bread. I've seen that. But when you look on the ingredients, none of it says whole grain. It just says enriched flour. That, that, that means it's not a whole grain. It will say whole grain flour or whole grain oats, or it, it has to have the word in the ingredients, whole grain before whatever that part of the bread would be to be whole grain. And and uh, all those legumes are, are full of protein, the whole grains, we even have whole grain, we even have brown pasta, wheat pasta now that, that is a whole grain. But really another portion, so we wanna do, we wanna push the fruits and, fruits and vegetables. We also wanna make sure that we cut down on the saturated fat. Anything from an animal has saturated fat, anything, meaning meat, milk, butter, cheese, all of that saturated fat, it has to do with the way it's chemically formed, but saturated fat, the problem with taking a lot of that in like red meat is that it increases the production of cholesterol in your body. 
when we talk about coronary artery disease, that plaque that forms has to do with sometimes the cholesterol. And if you've had your cholesterol level taken, there's an LDL, which is the bad cholesterol, and HDL, which is the good. The HDL goes around and takes the, the excess cholesterol and gets rid of it. The LDL tends to deposit it to 100% cholesterol. So cut down on that saturated fat if you can. Try to find alternate proteins or fish. Fish is good. Uh, poultry without the skin is good. Those are all things that you can do to, to help. That's why I talked about beans and lentils because that will be an example of a protein that you can take in. Peanut butter, nuts are also very healthy. Now they'll, they have a decent amount of calories, so you don't want to eat a whole jar of peanut butter at a time, but the fat in the, in the nuts are, are good fat. That's an unsaturated fat, and that's a healthier fat for you. Olive oil is good for you. That helps fight inflammation in our bodies. Uh, broccoli helps fight inflammation. And I would also try to cut down on the amount of sugar that you take in. Sugar really doesn't have any redeeming value in nutrition. It, there's nothing positive about sugar except that it makes everything taste sweet. People often say to me, yeah. what about honey? Honey's natural. Guess what? Honey and sugar, the same thing chemically. They're both C6H12O6. When you take honey, it converts to that same chemical composition. As the molecules are bigger, that's why honey is thicker. So honey, sugar, both the same. I would try to really cut down. Sugar is a very high inflammatory food. And I think you'll start to notice a difference. If you try to cut down on the sugar, you'll get used to not eating it. And you'll start to notice, be sensitive to the fact that you are taking in something sweet. And it's okay for the natural sugars in the fruits. But yeah, there's fructose in the fruits and that they're 100% carbohydrate. That's why I tend to not eat a ton of fruits, but there are fruits. Uh, fruits are good for you. If you're going to eat a fruit, eat a fruit. Don't drink fruit juice. Eat the fruit. We've okay. got we've got apple juice, applesauce, and a whole apple. The a whole apple would be the best out of those three choices. All right. If I were looking then to make a meal, um, the best. So if I'm I'm doing it, I'm and let's say I'm going to, I have a bag of broccoli in the freezer. So I've got my frozen veggies. I can maybe, it might be a microwavable ability. It might be something I'm just going to put in a saute pan. And so that would be a light oil, like an olive oil, right? Yep. And just toss that about. Could I throw in maybe some shaved almonds for my nut sure. piece for that? Um, I, so it's it's kind of simple for, for some of us who are going, well, gee, I don't, not, not sure how to incorporate some things. So That's true. And, and that's a really good point. This is done, You don't have to have a gourmet chef to make these meals. You can really be creative and put in whatever you want. And a great way to do it would be if anybody has an air fryer, those, oh. those things are so easy and they're healthy for you and they don't take as long as a regular oven. But you can also try like a skillet that you said, put in some vegetables, put in some meat, put in some almonds, just whatever you like, put in there and cook it all together and then eat it. It's really pretty easy. But you don't have to you don't have to follow really complicated recipes to get what you need. But I feel like we went over. I, I, let's just go back and, and just reiterate. You really need to increase the amount of vegetables and fruits is, that you're eating, especially the vegetables. The other thing is, if you have high blood pressure, there's a thing called the DASH diet, and that that means that you want to increase vegetables because they contain potassium. Potassium helps to lower your blood pressure. So that's good. And so eat your vegetables, eat a lot of vegetables, try new vegetables, put things on them that, that might, little spices that, that uh, might make them taste better. Although I love them the way they are. Try to consume some of those beans. If you like any legumes or make an effort. Black beans, Mexican uh, food contains a lot of beans, pinto beans, those are good too. Indian food contains a lot of vegetables and a lot of lentils and things like that. So can there I, are ways can I can do that. Can we buy, since you mentioned beans, and I may not be comfortable making beans, but I might put them on something like like black beans that are done or refried beans or something. Can I, is it acceptable, is it a good, healthy choice to buy it packaged like that, like a refried bean, for example? You, yeah, you can get refried beans. I would always buy the vegetarian ones because they don't have lard in, and you can see that black beans. And I tend to buy uh, Goya black beans, so okay. uh, sometimes those have a little sodium in, but it's not going to kill you. The other problem we didn't talk about was sodium. Sodium is in so many foods. All these packaged foods have sodium in. You must be careful when you look at anything over 300 milligrams a serving, I think is too much sodium. Soups are bad. 
uh, well, I, I shouldn't say bad. So, soups are typically very high. I saw a soup that had a thousand milligrams of sodium in one serving. I I, I gasped audibly. Yeah. I, I didn't be able to stir up. I thought I was nuts. But yep. you know, that's another thing. Any processed food, we want to try to cut down on that processed food. Try to make it, you know, foods that haven't been altered in any way that will be healthier for you and for your body. All right. Um, um, absorbing it all in terms of, you know, thinking about meals and, you know, how we make things. So I think even if they just start with a beginning of something, whether it's looking for that whole grain product, whether it be in the bread or in the pasta, as you said, um, maybe it's adding um, or changing it from a canned product to a frozen right, right. Of thing. Maybe another example would be to try, um, you know, that quinoa and that can be purchased, as you said, right down in the pasta aisle. I can yes. find that, right? Okay. Yep. Maybe it's again, um, watching that processed meat, eliminating that even from my, you know, if I ate something every day, cut back a couple of days in that week so that well, I'm, I'm eating a little healthier incorporating a little healthier foods while I'm walking in my driveway. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. No, and, and that's the key. And we don't want to be overwhelming in what we're telling you. But uh, remember that the, when I talked about processed foods, we forgot to talk about deli meats. A lot of the deli meats are high in nitrates and high in salt. So be careful with that. But again, why don't you sit down and evaluate your food and your exercise? Try to change one thing exercising for now. Try to change one thing food wise. Stop there, see how that goes. You can then move down, try to the second thing, try the second thing eating and just do it, be gradual about it. But I would be thrilled and your bodies will be singing if you get up and move around. You will feel that you, you the pain that you have, sometimes will say, oh, it hurts, it hurts. Sometimes like arthritis, it's better if you move. The pain yeah, is better exactly. with arthritis if you move as opposed exactly. to not moving. So I think there's, there's evidence out there and you can always call Ann and I, we'll walk with you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm always looking for somebody to walk with. And I always like it that way because I can try a new path or a new trail that that um, you feel comfortable with with somebody else. So I agree. Um, I think I agree. On, on that note, I think it's 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 that healthy way to live, whether it's heart healthy or just in general, a lifestyle by moving more, increasing that exercise, watching our nutrition and, and the things that we're eating and trying to really incorporate it together one step at a time and examine how you feel afterward. And I think you'll notice that there are benefits that you're feeling by doing that, right? I definitely Linda? agree, Anne. Well, I want to thank you. <laughs> well, we're, we're right out of time. So I want to thank you so much for sharing the information. As you said, we could be talking for all the subject for uh, many hours already. So thank you so much for getting this tight and concise for us. And hopefully everybody will be beginning to do that in this new year I and be heart so. healthy for, for their month and for themselves. And again, thank you all for tuning in to Aging Matters. Thanks. Take care. Aging Matters on BCTV is supported by the Berks County Area Agency on Aging.